Lumin just released a new update, the 2023.1. Let's have a look at the past features. I'm sure that there are some that you may have missed. Now in Lumion, you can use ray tracing for glass reflections. While the glass material is not fully ray traced yet, you can still achieve realistic reflections with the improved ray tracing effect. All you need to do is go to the material editor, right in the bottom left corner. Once you are in, pick the material you want to apply a glass material. There's a category named glass that you should spot. Tap on that and you will see a whole range of glass material options that Lumion offers. For this window here, I'm going for the interior glass folder. You can select the first option in there. If you double click on it, it opens up a ton of advanced options for you to play around with. Oh, and another thing, they have increased the max value for the reflectivity slider to 200% now. That means we've got way more freedom to experiment, giving it more flexibility. Next is ray trace reflections for water and ocean. They've already got a bunch of preset water materials ready for us to dive into. You can find them under landscape, check out the right side of the screen and you'll see this icon with a water thumbnail. This is where you get to choose the water that works best for your scene. Now, if you can't find the perfect fit, no worries. Just double click on the material. This will take you to a bunch of options where you can fine tune the color, density, wave scale, and a whole lot more. Just a heads up though, these materials won't reflect each other. One piece of glass won't show the reflection of another. It's a little bit of a bummer right now, but fingers crossed, they will roll out an update to fix this soon. And guess what's back? The custom materials library. I've been missing this feature, but now it's not just about saving and loading your favorite materials fast. You can even arrange your collections in folders the way you want it. To tuck any material into your custom library, you just hit those three dots at the top right of the material properties, then tap on the last icon labeled Save to Custom Materials. And I got a quick hack for you. Before you save, angle the camera to show off your material at its best for a thumbnail. That view will be used for the thumbnail image. When you are naming the material, there's a category field where you can set up a new folder to stash your material. Like this one's a concrete floor, so I'm gonna pop it into that folder. And there's another cool thing. You can copy over all your old Lumion materials from the materials folder. You can find this in your documents, slash Lumion, slash materials, slash custom. If you don't find a custom folder, you can create it manually. And this is how it looks when you first open Lumion. <laughs> yeah, it might seem a bit messy, but it's easy to get it started out. Just set up some folders in your Windows Explorer and move the materials in there. Next time you open Lumion, everything will be neatly organized. Next one is converting materials. Any collections of custom materials you have saved from early versions of Lumion can now be adapted to the new Lumion 2023 material system. You can do this either by shifting them into the custom material folders or can load those early Lumion materials straight from your disk into Lumion 2023. And it's time for an announcement. I'm finally opening up enrollment for my new Lumion render course. I've got new content from interiors to exteriors, both with ray tracing and rasterization. Also, there will be new lessons for basic and advanced animation, a whole new section for advanced techniques, and a whole module just for theoretical lessons like color theory, composition, lighting, among others. I've got you covered even if you are a complete beginner. There's also a step-by-step -step lesson for Lumen introduction. The link to join will be up there and in the description below this video. They've brought back the interface for loading a material set in Lumion 2023.1. This is super handy for quickly coming up with different material variations for the same building, for example. To start away material sets, head to material mode and look at the top right corner of the screen. Next to the model thumbnail, you will spot two new icons, one for load material set and another for save material set. Click on the save button and let's name this set. Now, change the materials of the model, just hit apply. So now let's say I'm really digging the first variation and I want my building to support that exact material set. How do I get it back? Easy peasy. Jump back into material mode and this time hit load material set. Choose the set we saved earlier and voila, our materials are back in action. And here's more on materials. For standard materials, when you assign a color or normal map to an empty slot, 
the slider value now automatically shoots to 100%. Also, if you are assigning a standard material with foliage, the leaves will now show up as thumbnails instead of a slider. Navigating complex scenes just got easier, thanks to the updated layer interface. When managing layers in build mode, you will now see new additional features. The number of objects on an active layer, the option to select all objects on an active layer, the option to move all objects to another layer, and the option to delete an empty layer. To get to these new shiny new options, simply hover over the layer and double-click to pop open the new menu. With these added options, you're going to have a lot more say in how you arrange your models and objects in the scene. Next one is animated phasing improvements. They freshen up the UI with a sleek new design that lets you scroll vertically and reorder things by dragging the tracks. And Lumion also capped the max length for an animation at 90 seconds. The UI for the clipping buttons on the color correction got an upgrade. Now, anytime you tweak anything, like say the exposure, the histogram shows you the changes in real time. No more need to keep hitting render preview to get a peek at your changes. It's all right there as you are working on it. Next one is rendering. And here's a handy update. Now, whenever you pick any aspect ratio, the rule of thirds overlay will show up just right. You can see, even if you switch to vertical and then right-click and drag the mouse, you will see the rule of thirds pop up correctly. It's a small change, but a welcome one. There are new improvements and changes to the ocean shader on the landscape. Aside from the ocean shader getting a solid upgrade, there are also new slider names. For example, clearness was the turbidity, water level is now used instead of height, scatter color replaces the surface brightness, translucent color replaces water brightness, also, scatter color range has been readjusted and converted to percentage to cover from 100 to 10,000 percent. And the translucent color range converted to percentage to cover from 1 to 100 percent. LiveSync plugin has been enhanced with a new status panel. This upgrade makes real-time modeling and rendering more straightforward. It provides the ability to verify if the connection is active and also offers options to stop or resume the connection as well as selecting a model to synchronize. This certainly makes the process more efficient and user-friendly. Lumion has brought back the feature that allows models to be imported with visible outlines. For some file formats, you'll notice an Import Edge slash Lines switch. Simply activate it to display black outlines, which can enhance the visual appeal of a scene. There are also stability improvements. Lumion addressed some retro compatibility issues they have had when converting older Lumion scene files to Lumion 2023. If you had some files that weren't able to fully convert, maybe now you can give it a try with this new update. And let me know which of these new features you like the most. And don't forget to check my new Lumion course. I'll leave a link up there and in the description below this video. And I'll see you in the next one.